welcome all of you and thanks uh, kiran ji uh, nikita uh, vishal uh, mr mehra so what i will do probably i will share one very short uh, presentation which talks about the tool so and it's like a guide uh, for you to actually what exactly you are going to do over the next 30 minutes and uh, once we basically finish that presentation you we will share a link in the chat box or if any of you are basically using your smartphone you can scan a qr code and you can begin your test and you can post your question any doubt so that we uh, me and my team will address those questions so without wasting uh, time I, i will just quickly get into uh, answering some of the or walking you through the presentation so uh, as samir said uh, so the tool that you are going to experience today uh, i think all of us the people who have involved who have been involved in actually developing this tool and if we put together all of their experiences so we say that it's almost 300 years of human experience uh, subject matter experience that has gone into this uh, tool uh, it is extremely focused around growth right so uh, you have heard samir talking about taking uh, smes from 2x or say taking them 2x to 10x of revenue growth so whatever you'll see majorly focused around growth uh we are not uh, going to actually just ask qualitative questions but we are trying to actually understand uh, your key performance indicators and then later on see that how do you do vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis your peers and some of the benchmarks in your in your uh, industry uh this tool that you are going to experience it has been market tested it has been actually uh, say looked uh, at and approved and actually appreciated by some of the subject matter experts people from the from the uh, from the big consulting uh, of, uh, firms they have actually gone they have seen they have approved some of the some of the algorithms that we have we uh, are also we currently what you are going to experience has a strong back end uh, ai driven recommendation engine right so you are going to actually experience that and which is continuously we are actually developing that back end engine so that we come up with more uh, specific and more uh, precise uh, solutions for all of you and as you can see you will experience uh, which is very easy to use right so uh, i will quickly get into the uh, the tool uh, the tool part so this particular tool has six different sections so first section is basically going to talk about uh, or we are trying to understand how good you are at uh, your strategic management right then we are going to look at the revenue management aspect operations then people management then how well you have adopted the digital uh, or your willingness to adopt the digital platform to run your business and last but not the least the financial management how it translates into uh, your financial discipline and how you manage your uh, day to day finances right so the uh, strategic management as i said uh, we would like to understand uh, first basically like do you have vision mission statement in place how well you are actually organizing your different resources to achieve your uh, overall objective uh in revenue man and growth my revenue growth management we are going to look at uh basically your current state of driving sustainable profitable growth from your existing and potential customer base so that is what some of the questions related to that you will answer operations uh, part we are going to talk about uh, basically how well you are using your resources and translating those uh, resources into uh, say profit for your organization uh third is people management self explanatory we are actually going to understand like are you able to attract talent do you face any uh, issues with respect to the the organization that you have in place to to achieve that end objective and the goal for your organization digital adoption uh, i think i heard kiran ji talk about some of this uh, say robotics industry 4.0 etc so we we just want to understand like are you using some any form of digital platform to run your business and are you planning to use uh, any platform in future or, or we will try to understand your awareness about these platforms and last as i said last section is going to talk about the financial management so we are basically going to look at how well you plan your financial uh, 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 your financial planning right uh, controlling some of these uh, finances uh, and how basically you are actually using your resources financial resources to towards uh, achieving the uh, the target growth rate so uh, what you are going to see once you uh, click on the link you are, you will land up uh, in a page uh, which which looks similar to what you have in front of you currently so uh the the page this will be your first landing page 
uh, where you will have uh, a, a very short video which talks about your journey into Advani Advantage program, right? Uh, which basically, so I'm not going to play this video. You can actually do it uh, yourself, but broadly, you will understand your journey into the Vadwani Advantage program. Once you do that, we will need some uh, information about you uh, in terms of your name, your uh, basically your uh, about your business, which industry you belong to. Sorry. Yeah. So which industry you belong to, then number of employees, your email ID, some uh, information that we need to actually process and run this, come up with a recommendation and a diagnostic report. The way actually Samir mentioned that the RT-PCR report that you will uh, you will get. So that some information you need to provide. Uh, then your actual uh, experience or actual uh, stuff starts. So you, you we have some infographics, so it will help you understand the question better, right? What exactly we mean, some, some learning assets that you can see, right? uh so all these questions uh some of the most of the questions are supported with some some infographics to help you understand what exactly we are talking about uh and based on your best ability and best estimate right you need to actually you don't need to give us the accurate answer you just have to give us the best estimate uh, of uh, these questions that we are asking you so all these questions uh please uh, uh, i think just read them care carefully and Give your best estimate of for each of these answers, uh, each of these questions, and you will. Uh, once you finish one section, it will take you to the next section, and so on and so forth. You will go through these six sections that I talked about. Towards the end, we re are requesting all of you to actually give us a very short two uh, question feedback that how do you like it, so that we when we improve and when we come up with the next version, we can we can do that. Uh, and that's about it. And once you you finish, uh, uh, prob you will get a, a report in next five days in terms of a good uh, five, seven to eight pager report in terms of where we believe that you should you need to focus on in order to achieve the uh, the growth uh, that we believe that your business can actually deliver. Right. So so without wasting any time, uh, what I will request probably Mamta. I have my two of my colleagues, Mamta and Pratishta, on the call. So they will. Uh, uh, answer your question. So please put your questions in the chat box. If you have anything uh, while answering the question, if you face any difficulty, please uh, put them in a chat box. We will try to answer that uh, uh, to you personally on, on, on the Webex chat box. So the link will be posted now in the chat box, the same link that you can see here. Uh, so Mamta and Pratishta will uh, post uh, paste this link in the chat box or you can actually scan if you are doing this on your phone so you can take out your phone uh, take out your camera or a google lens or any any other uh, uh, qr code scanning application scan this qr code and it will take you to the uh, uh, to the to the online discovery tool right so it's very simple just take take out your phone and try and uh, scan uh, this qr code so I request all of you to all the participants to do that uh, because it will be fun going through this exercise together. And uh, you know, uh, just to share with you, in December we launched this with 200 SMEs live, uh, uh, basically in audience. And uh, we had eight of us basically guiding them through in this 200 SMEs. And within about 30-35 minutes, they were they answered about 70 questions. And now they have um, basically uh, almost about, um, I think about 15 to 20 page report with them. Uh, we basically clearly telling them where do they stand on an absolute basis, where do they stand on a related basis. Uh, across all the parameters that Keda talked about and what we refer to. So it's going to be fun. Uh, so just pick up your phones and scan it uh, while it is on the screen and or, or the link which is pasted in the chat box as Keda mentioned. I think Samir so we all as uh, the panelists also let's go and do this drill so that would be even more interesting as we all can speak and you know have a discussion about it yeah I think that's a good idea I think let's do that uh, some of you obviously have own companies so you, you refer to the companies that you own the panelists and uh, some of you may not own the company nevertheless it will be fun exercise to go through some of those answers as well and uh, this is an interactive session. I would request all the SMEs, uh, you know, even the simplest question if you have, don't hesitate to put it on chat box. Um, uh, you know, remember, we are a safe space and our intent is to help you. So no question is 
uh, very basic. Every question is very important. The more you question, more questions you ask, the better we will become. You know, one of the philosophies of all this questionnaire is you must know where you are. Otherwise, you will not know where you want to reach. Right? So at the end of the day, where you want to reach is dependent on where you are. Unless you know where you are, it's very tough to decide the journey between the two. And it's so simple uh, when we actually take a Uber or take an Ola that you know where you are and you give your GPS location to the, the provider. But we don't do that in the business. So that's what really is interesting. And this is exactly what you're doing. You're basically informing somebody who's going to be help you where you are. You're sharing your GPS location and this is the GPS location of your business. So I do have one or uh, two questions. So as simple as it seems, uh, just by filling up these uh, answers that you're saying and that too you're saying that it is not required that we need to fill up the exact uh, answer. So will you be able to tell the entire diagnosis of a com uh, company? Uh, I think that's a very good question Nikita. Uh, what we have found generally entrepreneurs who are running their own businesses are not wrong more than 10 to 20 percent. Uh, so therefore the probability of the error is about 20 percent which is fine. I think directionally it is very important where you are than getting accurate perfection uh, in terms of uh, you know the answers. So I think uh, I'm pretty sure those who are SME owners who are there in the audience who have been around for many many years and decades running their businesses will definitely know these answers. <laughs> so uh, even if not accurate it should be fine. I hope so. So I have landed you to the second page wherein strategic management uh, page is there. Do you have a mission and mission? Okay, great. Yes, we do have. I would want that people, we should be interacting while we are filling it up. Right. That's a good point, Nikita. Yes. I mean, everyone is free to sort of put those questions as they navigate. Uh, are we having questions? Not yet. Not but yes, we really want you to be interacting because this is something that is going to change your future. This is going to be an instrumental thing that is you know, this is the crux of the event that we are trying to do today. So, let's let's go for it. Samira, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead, Kuranji. Uh, is uh, the size uh, of the business uh, in any way relevant at this stage of analysis? Yes, because what benchmarks we have developed, Kiranji, in our assessment are relevant to the size of the business. So, for example, if you are a 30 crore business, we can't be telling a 30 crore business uh, uh, the benchmarks that are relevant for 500 crore businesses. So we have, you know, based on your answer, our algorithm will pick up the right relevant benchmark at the back end and then compare uh, where you should be given where you are. No, my question was, is there a, a size of the business that you would uh, start with in terms of analysis? Is there a minimum size or a maximum size? Oh, for the, for the health? The, giving the health. Oh, okay. I thought you were asking, uh, talking about the questionnaire. Uh, in terms but of the size for, of the business, for the SME, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so we have helped in the past with all businesses above 5 crores, no, not a single business below 5 crores. Our endeavor here is to actually build businesses and focus on businesses about 20 crores of uh, revenue. Uh, however, this form that you will see is applicable for any size of the business in, in, in conceptually. So that doesn't Correct. matter because our algorithm picks up depending on the size. Correct. Obviously, the parameters and the analysis uh, uh, elements would change as the business size changes. Correct. Exactly. Correct. <laughs> Uh, Samir sir, we are receiving, uh, you know, questions in the chat box. So either I can read it out or is it possible if you can, you know, I think yeah, we will, we will take that up and we will uh, just uh... Yeah, Kedar, if you can start answering those also, it will be helpful for other participants uh, as well. Kedar, Pratishtha or um, anybody, Mamta, if you can start answering those questions one by one. Uh, so there is a question around, uh, is it applicable for somebody who's planning to start a business so unfortunately no because uh, this is broadly we believe this is not focused for startups or somebody who's planning to look at uh, starting a business right because it is more about current state of your business and uh, where do you want to take that so at least it's not there uh, in, in, in the existing uh, tool that you are seeing at the same time, Kedar, I mean, there would be startups which have built traction, you know, who are doing 
five yeah. to ten crores worth of business. So obviously they would fall under the category of MSMEs, right? Yeah, 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 right. yeah, absolutely. We need some data. Basically, at least uh, the, the criteria is basically if, uh, if some data. We and so you can for to to answer Shashank probably. Shashank, what you can do, you can you can look at some of your closest competition or the company that you want to become and if you have some idea of that company and if you want to check that okay whether uh, like how that company is doing and i want to imitate or actually inspire from that company and build my business that you can definitely do right then if you could uh, uh, also share you know the the process that follows once you know the analytical part is over what is the timelines you look at? What is the process? Uh, but in fact, you know, some may need more technical input. Some may need more financial inputs. It yeah. varies from, of course, industry to industry. But is there some timeline you follow? Yeah. So yes, in, in this particular survey, if if I can just take uh, back uh, my screen and I'll, I'll try to show there is a journey that we have defined for SMEs, right? So. Uh, and Samir, Samir can obviously talk about it in, in much detail, but we uh, like, for example, today you do this business discovery, you register on a platform, right? Once you do that, uh, we basically once we onboard you and then we do deeper discussion and analysis on uh, your report, right? So that we have a one on one discussion and then we agree with the entrepreneur that what exactly are the real problem and we articulate those problem in, in a slightly detailed manner. And then from there, uh, we classify them growth related problem, operations related and other problems. And uh, we typically our consultant, uh, we try to help you with the growth related aspect. And for the other problem areas, we, we, uh, we uh, basically uh, we assign an advisor and we help you find advisor who can actually help uh, you in those particular technical areas or other finance related areas so you have a domain specialist and panel with you right yes so we have about 140 kiranji uh, we have curated based on our stringent selection criteria and 30 of them are pretty active in all the domains vertical skills horizontal skills etc and um, we, I think our endeavor is to make sure that the best reaches the SMEs. And given that we don't charge a single pie, um, you know, it's very important for SMEs to understand that the value that they get is uh, equivalent to a top consulting firm. But we as a foundation don't charge the other advisors uh, also uh, would be involved in subsidized rates uh, because it's a foundation that we are doing as public service at the end of the day. And uh, that's important um, uh, model that we follow. In fact, Bharat, if you can allow me to share my screen, I want to talk about the journey that Kiranji asked the question about, and let it remain on the screen. So Sorry, for it's currently it's, it's it's playing. I'm just uh, playing this. I don't know whether that's visible to all of you. And then we can yeah, we can see we can see the screen. Yeah, yeah. So this is broadly the journey that uh, I was talking about. I think, uh, you know, what you have here is uh, something the MSMEs should not hesitate to get into in terms of taking advantage of because uh, uh, truly, I mean, this is the areas where MSMEs find it difficult to have access to professional help. And, you know, you, there are agencies like Dun & Bradstreet and various other rating companies which sort of give you a deep dive into the analytics of your business. But uh, uh, this kind of, you know, step by step hand holding is very unique in terms of, you know, the, the entire model that you have. And I think MSMEs uh, should jump into a situation where they can get hold of inputs that you give and the hand holding and the support that you provide through this platform. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Kiranji. And I would urge all the SMEs uh, who are actually experiencing this tool to understand one very important thing. Uh, you know, we have lots and lots of uh, 
occasions wherein we hear people and hear professionals understand and learn but i think what is very important is the practice um, and this will help you practice what you learn so you, although you may have heard very interesting things in our uh, today's session and we'll hear a little bit more uh, at the end of the day action is most important right action is worth thousand words so this is action uh, all these steps are action so therefore i would urge all of you not just go out of this event thinking it was a good occasion and good event and forget about it because this online diagnostic is very well informed in terms of years of experience and what we are bringing to you is a journey that follows thereafter which is more important than the online diagnostic review which is just a start uh, this is understanding where you are so therefore i think the when the rubber hits the road at the end of the day the transformation has to be followed it up disciplined manner so we will give you that proper discipline proper support proper knowledge proper access um and of course the help in both um, action as well as implementation at the end of the day we want to see you 2x to 10x just not on paper but actually in reality so i think this is what will transform uh, what is on paper to reality uh, so i would encourage and urge all our smes to participate in this actively in fact i was just thinking about it you know when kiran ji and all of us talked about the finance related problem everybody wants more money but what they do not understand in our experience in last 3 decades of my experience is that people who are giving money also need to get back their money right and they will yeah. get back their money <laughs> only when you guys will put up a very solid business plan that the givers of the money can trust and say yes i have the guarantee that if i'm giving money that money is going to come back right because nobody is here except for philanthropy purposes like ours uh, doing charity right everybody is here to make sure that they all gain uh, in terms of a win win situation so before you get into any financing any asking for money please ask yourself do you have a solid plan do you have is it market tested is it do you know how you're going to grow 10x because only then anybody who's going to give money is going to trust your uh, business right so before you do anything first step is to diagnose second is to actually prepare a business plan and this is what badwani foundation comes into picture and then of course the uniqueness about this program is our output of what you do with us will become a very solid input to urban um, mn exchange and finance craft enterprises and uh, because they will have a clarity in terms of what are the financial solutions required for and what basis what is the basis of those finances right so that's very important i think there is a question on uh, a question by arun on uh, throw some light on any fee charged by advani foundation msm engages by the way so let me repeat we don't charge a single pi we don't charge a single rupee we don't charge a single dollar in any form what we definitely will charge you with is with respect to time because if you invest your time in the right things to plan for the future and that's the commitment we ask for we don't ask for any money from our side and then you have a choice to take that advice and do it yourself or you have a choice to actually have access to our advisors who will charge some money who will charge some fees but they will be far below the market rates and the subsidiary rates because it's through advani foundation I think that's the that's the model that we follow. So let me repeat for everybody's purposes: we as Foundation and Advantage Program do not charge a single fee, not a paisa, not a rupee, not a dollar. There are other advisors. If you wish to access them, then they will charge certain fee, but they will be at the subsidized rates, and those will be at a quality because we would have curated them. So we'll bring to you only those advisors whom we feel we are confident that they can match your expectations and help you. so if you land up paying fees it will be only to them not to badmani foundation uh another observation samir is uh, that you know post the pandemic a lot of businesses who thought they had everything right about their business model actually struggle in the situation where uh, post lockdown and post uh, the supply chain break a lot of businesses faced issues and uh, you know an msme essentially if he's uh, uh, put behind the clock by almost two months in terms of non productive uh, situations like this can actually struggle for the next one one and a half years to recover that uh, two month three month non productive period loss so um, i think to step back look at your business model review and to even cost correct or pivot to a new uh, age uh, business model where whether it is adaptation to technology or even moving your product category to another this thing would require of course uh, 
this is where i think vadvadi foundations inputs would be crucial for a business which is struggling to actually come out of that situation and move uh, in the right direction very true with kiranji very true i second that you know just to share with everybody our um, you know the fact based the evidence that we have gathered from the market you know before pandemic i i, uh, I this is uh, i have authored one of the in one of my articles in economic times about this particular study we studied about 750 public limited companies in different industries we found very interesting thing by the way kiranji and all the others is that out of those public limited companies who are generally large who have raised money from public uh, those companies which were able to anticipate and anticipate what could go wrong and nobody anticipated covid right nobody anticipated such a massive uh, impact that businesses worldwide would actually uh, have like a shoulder but those businesses who were who had built up the right immunity and it's so interesting is it just like a virus though had those businesses which had built up immunity in terms of building cash reserves in terms of anticipating what could go wrong and were measuring their kpis key performance indicators on a regular basis to be able to take proactive steps than reactive steps were able to post on an average about uh, 200 to 300 basis points more pbdit margins ebitda margins and they were able to post more than about 1000 basis points to 1500 basis points top line differential between those who were laggards and those who suffered the most and those who did not because of this preparation and proactiveness so that has come out i mean i have authored that in the economic times so all those who are interested my police can share that link but more the lesson is that uh, right now when we are talking going through omicron and there are other mutant uh, viruses that might enter there are all external shocks but as you know in trauma centers in hospitals are always well prepared that's why they are called trauma centers right so when patient comes in with a trauma they are able to quickly correct that problem because they are already prepared now those who are not prepared will invariably suffer more so it's both ways you need to have an ambition you need to have growth aspirations to grow 10x but you should also think what could go wrong continuously so that you are better prepared and better you have better ability to withstand the external shocks so we found that very interesting and even in this wave right now that we are going through and you know what is predicted in 2022 and 23 we believe that those of you in businesses who are able to measure it who are able to devote time to this and invest in your capabilities and learning those will definitely outshine those who are laggards or who continuously will figure about oh my god we i am the victim of this situation uh, uh, and that's the difference between the winners and the laggards yeah and i think what your analysis will actually do is uh, you know help uh, any msme to identify um, areas of growth and therefore the ability to take that risk in terms of investment to translate that investment into revenue over a period of time so this is i think uh, this analysis actually helps uh, perhaps an msme which is uh, struggle in uh, the last 2 to 1 and a half years to actually identify uh, the next uh, stage of development and growth in their business and of course remove that element of doubt or risk which was uh, you know in terms of wanting to cost correct so your analysis can actually clean that uh, thought process and uh, make it uh, more distinct for any msme to take that path precisely kiranji i think one of the interesting things that i found and we found in last two years by dealing with all this 600 businesses and 120 businesses uh, in 2021 was the fact that sme owners and founders learned how to use data to make their decisions right because it's always the gut feel we always have gut feel we always have a intuition we always have anecdotal evidences based on our interactions with our customers and competitors and partners but sometimes data reveals some different things and it's an outside in information which is where our consultants will help you where to stand with respect to your competition etc right so this analysis will allow the entrepreneurs and the owners to validate what they already know or reveal what they did not know and that could come as a surprise to you and this has happened in both cases i mean in the either of the cases in uh, all our clients that we have um, handled in the past so you are very right kiranji great samir ji referring to the study that you were just now referring to uh, that you uh, published in uh, print uh, nomic times just to add to that um, cash is the king was was a cliche that we always heard but uh, nothing has no such situation has ever proved it so right as 
the current pandemic situation and uh, all those who were sitting with with uh, who had managed their cash well and who were not uh, uh, who had uh, not been carrying too much of debt on them are the ones who have found themselves in a situation where they could capitalize on in this uh, on the on this uh, situation maximum uh, but in fact what i have been observing for past almost a year and a half almost two years now it's two years since pandemic actually broke up and uh, in last two years this style of the, the the very concept of doing business has completely gone over on you know it's turned over its head uh, we used to oh, in fact all our buyers also used to go uh, basically believe in just in time inventory and managing their inventory keeping it very uh, lean and thin and therefore everybody used to do that manage manage their inventory on a very tight basis but what what uh, pandemic has done is that even our customers the big customers who till the other day used to talk about just in time deliver, uh, delivery have uh, now actually switched over to at least 30 to 40 days or 45 days of inventory and uh, so is the is the situation with us also and that has suddenly sucked up huge amount of capital plus supply chain disruption has again taught us something that we need to we need to build up enough uh, inventories at our own warehouse rather than uh, getting ourselves subjected to uh, violent price fluctuations that we are facing almost every couple of uh, months uh, prices go up phenomenally and they come down also phenomenally so these yeah. are some of the changes i don't know how long this would go on but uh, at least uh, going by the way the way pandemic is actually shaping up every 2 3 months 4 months a new uh, variant actually sh- shows up and then it completely unsettles the entire business uh, environment so you just don't know business is open up and then they suddenly start closing but now uh, shores also sea ports also start opening up then they suddenly start getting restrictions so, so all kinds of things are happening and uh, next i think next 6 to 6 months to perhaps one year could be absolutely game changer for several several MSMEs and Maybe. especially those who are extremely debt ridden are the ones who are going to find going very tough as very tough. Uh, yeah yeah and then you are very right manager i mean the other day i'm i'm also um, uh, i'm also a chairman at federation of indian uh, sme associations and we were interacting with a couple of rbi folks and um, it is very clear that you know you have a dichotomy right in our situation we have 600 billion dollars worth of cash requirements but banks and lenders are unwilling because they don't know whether money is going to come back and um, you know the risk sitting on the books of the smes basically is gone into a spiral so you know you are very right when we think about cash is king and then when we study the businesses those those who are debt ridden and are asking for more debt Uh, which doesn't fund the growth, but it actually funds their uh, earlier debt, are definitely right. a problem. Uh, absolutely, and uh, our prediction is that there will be consolidation for sure, Meeraji. Um, and uh, we should not shy away from that because at the end of the day, uh, for the ecosystem to survive and thrive, they need to carry good components of that system. If you carry the bad components of system, good money is going after bad money, and then you have a problem, and which is what India is suffering. uh from right so i think we need to change that for sure i could predict this is, situation will completely shift out uh, you know will completely shift all the all the uh, the the laggards the winners and the laggards would be uh, separated uh, uh, just yeah. like uh, nominally everybody would see that laggards are standing on one side and winners are just running away correct correct so while other people are uh, have already done the assessment can we just give uh, maybe a 2 3 minutes for them to complete and we move forward with the session yes yes uh, i'm just looking at uh, almost 30 minutes to them. yeah yeah so absolutely and um, i think so it's, uh, i think the timelines have kind of shifted so uh, kedar uh, since when uh, the people started filling in because our estimate is about 30 minutes uh, for them yeah, so it's it's amir it's all uh, almost uh, say 27 28 minutes okay good so i think another Five uh, minutes. Yeah, five. another five minutes. We could give to everybody, and then uh, we could move on to the next session. Um, to all my participants and all the SME uh, participants <laughs> experiencing this, um, in case you are not able to finish in next five minutes, etc., 
uh, don't leave that um, uh, i would recommend that you keep finishing it uh, and get our teams and get in touch with uh, us uh, in terms of uh, taking it to completion because after this you need to register to the platform where i think some of you are having some difficulties post that you are going to get the report based on the uh, questions that you have answered so i uh, i think when you basically write to us and uh, when you um, want to finish and see your report in your hand please don't hesitate to finish it later and then do it those who are able to finish in next 5 minutes 5 minutes fantastic so that will be good uh, and then we will obviously revert